My top two artists of all time when I start really loving music is Kate Bush, Bob Marley. I call it my 1A, my 1B, and two would be N.W.A. So, yeah, that's where my musical tastes lie. Because my dad was listening to Run DMC and uh, Houdini, and my grandmother was listening to Bob Marley and Patti LaBelle, and uh, Uncle Russ was listening to uh, The Doors and Kate Bush and Guns N' Roses and Sting, you know what I mean? And it was just like, I loved all music, and he was just turning me on to something that was just brand new. I mean, I, I loved the production first and foremost, I mean, because it kind of set a tone, and then the way she was uh, singing the songs, her voice was just angelic. I was like, hadn't heard nobody do it like that. It was just so weird, you know what I mean? The sounds and, and what she was talking about, it was just kind of crazy, you know what I mean? And then he's like, you know, she produced all this stuff too. So I was like, oh man. I just always thought of her like, as like Phantom of the Opera, kind of somewhere living in this big castle with a piano that was 10 times the size of a, a regular piano, just kind of just playing the piano all day with sheer curtains blowing in the window. Like she's like almost like Rapunzel, but on the top of a hill somewhere, just in a, on a castle, just desolate, playing the piano and wailing. I, I thought it was cool. my favorite part, let's do it. For one, it was good to pedal to, you know. Um, it made you go fast. I just liked it, you know, when the drums come on, it just, it's, it was like one of those, like a workout song, you know what I'm saying? So I had to ride like, phew, it had to be like 20 to 30 blocks to school, you know what I mean? So I would just listen to it and just, just ride, and it was, it was just good, you know what I mean? It was, it was kind of adventurous. And then the hook comes in and just make you pedal faster, and, you know, by the time I got to school, I was uh, probably sweating like I just got out of PE class. It was pretty deep, you know what I mean? I guess it was some, two people in a relationship, and the woman was saying if she could, she'd make a deal with God and swap places so the man could understand how a woman think, and, then, and the, the woman can understand how the man think, and then they have a better relationship, which is fucking cool as shit. You know, is the dude want to swap places too? Do he really? Think about it. Hmm? <laughs> Come on, come on, darling. Let's exchange the experience. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think her songs tell stories, and we also tell stories. Sometimes there's a double meaning in what she says and the layers of production, how the songs morph, they might start one way and then they morph and break down into something. It's, it's, it's very theatrical in a sense to, you can kind of envision it in your head, like, you know what I mean? Where you can kind of envision your own world of what an uh, outcast song is. Her songs did that for me. Like, it would just be so dramatic, like the different turns it would take. Like, it made the music exciting because it wasn't just, uh, repetitive. You didn't know what was coming around the corner and when that song ended, you didn't know if it was going into another song or if that was like a B or C section to that one particular song. It was just, you know, one cohesive body of work that took you on an adventure. Well, I'm, getting, getting, I'm trying to get me to go to church in this motherfucker. <laughs> I tell you, that's my jam, boy.